Good morning, Europe, and good evening, Numea. And I'm here today to explain you the work uh, that I done during the last three years for my PhD. And uh, I would to say thank you to CNRT for the participation to the program Amiante Bon Pratique. And uh, I, during my PhD, I studied the alteration of asbestiform minerals of New Caledonia that are subjected under subtropical climate. Mineralogical monitoring and geochemistry study uh, was carried out. Two, uh, there are two aims of the study, the main two aims. Uh, the first was to, de to develop uh, a diagnostic routinely analytical strategy able to discriminate and characterize uh, with certainty the different species of asbestos and their capacity in the emission of fibers in mining context. And the second, to evaluate the impact of super alteration, supergen alteration on the processes of genesis and emission of fibers into the environment. A focus was realized on the estimation of the role of chemical element exchange on the capacity of dispersion of fibers. So I would you explain uh, the planning for this presentation. I began with the state of art, then uh, I mm, done a little description of the sample of New Caledonia. Uh, so, uh, the program was uh, separated in three main uh, subjects, the identification and characterization of mineral fibers of New Caledonia, the evaluation of the impact of supergen alteration on these processes, and the identification in situ in uh, the mining context of mineral fibers with a portable Raman device. At the end, I conclude and I give some perspective. Uh, what is an asbestos? Asbestos is, with the term asbestos, we generally defined a commercial and regulatory term that was applied to a group of six minerals, the serpentine chrysotile, and the amphibole actinolite, amosite, antitophilite, crocidolite, and tremolite. Uh, the six minerals uh, have a specific crystal habit and several physical, chemical, and technological properties. Associated to these fibers, uh, there are other asbestos fibers that can uh, um, that in some cases can modulate its toxicity. This is the case, for example, of aerionite and fluoroadenite. Uh, recent studies uh, have been dedicated and the evaluation of the potentially carcinogenic power of fibrous antigorite. Uh, we focused the, our attention on the study of chrysotile, tremolite, and fibrous antigorite that are present in New Caledonia, in the geological unit of New Caledonia. It should be noted that uh, no common, non-conclusive and definitive sh um, definition of fibers, asbestos, asbestos for term are present and available in literature. During the thesis, I mentioned uh, um, the term elaborated by Nayash that uh, replaced the term fibers with the term elongated mineral particles, including asbestiform and non-asbestiform cleavage fragments. It, uh, another um, important uh, subject is that uh, the definition of asbestos change as a function of the scale of observation uh, with which, uh, with which uh, study uh, as the asbestos or asbestiform of fibrous minerals. Uh, the environmental exposure to asbestos for minerals in New Caledonia is a huge health concern because uh, asbestos, uh, naturally asbestos, is present in the most uh, part of the geological units of the New Caledonia, uh, the ultra-basic uh, geological units of New Caledonia. The map show the potentially, uh, in yellow and orange, show the potentially presence of asbestos for minerals uh, and uh, in addition, New Caledonia is one of the most important producers of nickel from lateritic ore deposits. Uh, and in this context, mining ex extraction must deal with the natural occurrence of these uh, fi mineral fibers. This is a typical lateritic profile that we can find in New Caledonia geological units. And uh, we, can, we generally find a chrysotile in the form of veins of, and uh, veinlets, uh, and babe in the peridotite, in the altery peridotite, uh, in the saprolite and bedrock horizon. And we generally find antigorite and tremolite mineral in the form of dike or uh, in the shear plain, uh, in the red and yellow lemonite. Uh, um, a lateral item. 
So under this tropical, subtropical condition, weathering processes are the main responsible for the release of fibers of the asbestos minerals. Uh, natural deposits exposed to this condition uh, are generally subjected to a further process of alteration. At uh, present, a semi quantitative method able to classify uh, this kind of alterations is not present, it's still lacking. Conversely, uh, geologists of mining companies uh, develop a own uh, system of classification of this uh, state of alteration. Uh, we, I report the table for the Antigrid sample and increasing the degree of alteration from one to four, we observe a greater capacity in the emission of fibers. But uh, these criteria uh, are all visual and uh, morphologically. Uh, we decided to focus our attention to fibrous antigorite uh, for different reasons. The main is that uh, the New Caledonia is legislation is the only one in the, in the world that classifies antigorite as an asbestos. But uh, no toxicology, complete toxicology data are available at this moment. No. Um, recent studied uh, realized uh, at the Sconsetti Center have demonstrated that uh, a Caledonian antigorite is more fibrous compared to Italian or other uh, antigorites. The, so the abundance of breathable fibers of antigorite in the most geological units of New Caledonia may represent an additional risk for people exposed. And in order to ensure a better risk prevention, the establishment of a powerful diagnostic analytical strategy is required. Uh, concerning the sampling, 58 uh, samples were collected by geologists uh, of mining companies, Comité uh, Interminiament, 35 antigrades, uh, tremolites, chrysotile, and two uh, not identified uh, fibers. Uh, all samples uh, present different degree of alteration and uh, were collected from the most important geological unit of the country. At the end scale, samples of New Caledonia show an evident lack of coherence and a very altered appearance, especially for antigorate, uh, increasing the degree of alteration from one to four. Uh, uh, antigorate appear more friable and characterized by a structureless aspect. Chrysotile, instead, appear in the form of little veins and veinlets, cross-cutting the serpentinized hyperidotite. And this is the typical aspect that we can find at the outcrops of New Caledonia. On the contrary, tremolite samples show a little variation in morphology as the degree of alteration increases. Tremolite is characterized by typical columnar morphology. Six, six analytical techniques were uh, involved in this study, and uh, together with the techniques recommended for a European directive, other two techniques, the X-ray powder diffraction and micro rama spectroscopy, were involved. Uh, there are two techniques that uh, permit to uh, use benchtop and portable device that can be transportable in, many context, in mining contexts. Uh, concerning the identification and characterization of mineral fibers of New Caledonia, mineral identification was performed by a multidisciplinary routinely approach and by a comprehensive study of texture and morphologies as different degree of alteration. In addition, polarized light microscopy associated to dispersion staining, that is a technique widely used for the analysis of fiber concentration for asbestos containing materials, was applied to natural samples. The results show that about 60% of samples classified by mining geologists are subjected to misinterpretation. Comparing the analytical identification with the field survey, which is based on visual and morphological criteria, it's clearly evident that most of the samples have a different and more complex mineralogical nature. I report the example in the table of uh, um, uh, some of specimen recognized, identified by geology of mining company as antigua degree of alteration number one. But uh, we can 
see that uh, the most part of sample uh, are a melange, a mixed phase antigrate chrysotile, and two, two samples recognized as antigrate are two samples of chrysotile. I will describe uh, the sample 33 that uh, is the most uh, um, emblematic in this context. At the end scale, it uh, is formed, consisting of uh, the overlapping of well-formed labelle, um, characterized by a color by green to white. And the first uh, preliminary X-ray powder diffraction Raman portable investigation uh, confirm, uh, describe that is uh, uh, states that is chrysotile. We decide uh, for this reason to characterize more in detail these samples in order to better understand its real mineralogical nature. At the, at, at the stereo microscope, uh, the samples appear characterized by a lamellar morphology, but af just after a mechanical stress on the surface, we uh, observe the appearance of individual fibers. These fibers were analyzed with dispersion staining methods and uh, using the standard index uh, um, liquid refraction at 155, we can uh, identify the chrysotile phase. At phase contracts, we observe a beautiful pale blue with orange halo fiber. So, the observation of a petrography thin section with uh, optical microscopy and um, systematic study uh, realized with micro Raman spectroscopy confirm the identification of chrysotile. Uh, PLM images show the typical zebra like appearance of massive chrysotile. Uh, in addition, 60 spot analyses acquired with micro Raman confirm that the sample was. Homogeneous, is homogeneous, and we observe the typical Raman spectra of chrysotile. For this reason, we decide to go more in, uh, to, to regard more the morphological nature of these samples, and the same images uh, show, uh, demonstrate the um, fibrous uh, morphology of these samples. Finally, TEM associated to the fraction pattern confirm the identification of chrysotile variety. It's so interesting that chrysotile can crystallize in the form of macroscopically well-formed lamelle. For in this context, we decide to study more in detail the textural and morphological appearance of the sample of New Caledonia. Concerning chrysotile, uh, optical microscope image show the typical characteristic uh, image for uh, finding literature. Um, on the contrary, for antigorite, uh, antigorite sample in New Caledonia consisting of randomly oriented aggregates of fibrous lamelle that show a greater type of shapes and intergrowth. We can observe uh, in the picture uh, four kinds of uh, um, texture, and uh, from left to right, uh, star and far formed uh, aggregates, uh, the most typical interpenetrating texture, uh, lat shaped lamella, and the fibrous blades. Um, and uh, all these uh, four uh, textures were found uh, in the same uh, sample. Uh, so uh, it means uh, that several kind of morpho of texture can uh, um, coexist uh, in the same sample. Concerning tremolite, no great change in morphology were observed, and just a few samples uh, showed the uh, height uh, fracturation, and uh, that is uh, often uh, um, related to a higher degree of alteration. Um. Increasing the magnification, same images reveal the great variability in morphology of these, of these um, minerals. This is an example of chrysotile that uh, uh, show an unusual height density of tubes, and the fragment, the particle, um, is uh, formed consisting of a compact bundles of parallel fibrils. Concerning antigorite, uh, 
um, the great variability is observed and from a lat shaped morphology to a more fibrous. Generally, uh, the lamella of antigorite show a general fibrolamellar aspect with at the end the a fiber more curvilinear, flexible, and this in this case uh, um, Partial conversion into chrysotile is suggested. Comparing textural future and morphological appearance at a different scale of observation, we can observe that uh, several kinds of information about morphology are uh, uh, retained by optical microscopy. And uh, despite its uh, intrinsic limits uh, related to low magnification and uh, that is a two-dimensional technique, uh, optical, uh, the petrographic thin section retains several important information. This is true also for samples that, are, that consist of a fa uh, finally intimately intergrow of antigorite and bundles of uh, chrysotal. It is uh, clear in the figure on the left that there is um, alternance of an alternate of antigorite and chrysotile uh, bundles and lamelle. But to verify this information, to verify this observation, we need a more um, degree of uh, um, detail. And for this, you, you, we use the micro rama spectroscopy and uh, pointing the, differ the laser beam in dif the different lamelle and bundles. And the Raman peaks in nitrate number region confirm this integral of fibrolamelle of antigorite and the compact bundles of chrysotile. And uh, the Taft, the flexible taft was confirmed it's chrysotile. But it's uh, interesting to note, to notice, that uh, a little shoulder indicated by the arrow uh, um, up, that is at the peak position of antigorite is uh, related to the um, thickness of uh, the bundles of uh, chrysotile. Uh, compare the thickness of uh, mm, the tuft to the preparation of samples, the laser beam directly on chrysotile penetrates and is uh, impacted by the presence of antigorite below. So I uh, would you describe this uh, interesting sample, the sample 18, that uh, show a new specific and unusual texture. This is an image in a polarized light microscopy on the thin sec, photographing the thin section. And we can observe an unusual uh, star and far formed uh, aggregates. Um, this sample was identified by my geologists at the antigorite degree of alteration number two. And at the end scale, it exhibits an unusual lamellar aspect that consists of a, the overlapping of dried like yellowish to pale green lamelle. Preliminary results obtained with portable Raman demonstrate that at the lower wave number, we observe the typical Raman peaks uh, spectra of antigorate. Conversely, observing the OH stretching uh, vibration, the doublet of antigrate is a shift at higher wave numbers. This suggests the presence of uh, the secondary and other serpentine minerals. To analyze, to study this sample by uh, optical microscopy associated to dispersion staining, we need to uh, minimum to um, liquid in the refractives, one for the chrysotile and one for the other variety of serpentine. For the chrysotile, you, you, we use the, the standard uh, refractive index at 155.0. Uh, but uh, for antigorite, there is not today a, li a refractive index that was recommended, recommended by regulation because asbestos uh, is not um, except for New Caledonia context, uh, is not uh, considered as an asbestos. Uh, um, a great work of survey of different uh, refractive index liquid was carried out, and uh, the liquid, the refractive index value that matches most closely the antigrate phase is the 15680. Um, we observe a fibrous lamelle characterized by a phase contrast mode of observation by a pale blue to white color, and no halo was observed. 
<coughs> observing uh, the, the dispersion staining color, uh, observing in dark field, show uh, that fibrolamella appear with a beautiful indigo blue color. So we test these two index values so on uh, our, our sample, and uh, we observe, contrary to every expectation, that fibers exhibit an intermediate behavior and uh, exhibit the characteristic staining color of both antigorite and chrysotile varieties. So this technique does not allow to discriminate, in this case, the serpentine species. For this reason, we decided to use the micro Raman spectroscopy to investigate the different mineralogical assemblage on the thin petrographic section. And uh, about 60 spot analyses have been acquired, pointing the laser beam uh, on various lamellar blades, acicular particles, and at the area in contact with each other. But all 60 spot analyses are perfectly comparable. And, uh, the lower number region show the typical Raman spectra of antigorite. Conversely, the OH vibration demonstrates that uh, uh, all OH stretching peaks are generally attributed to lizardite, antigorite, and chrysotile coexist together in the same samples uh, to form a complex doublet. And it was the first time that I observed this uh, complex, beautiful doublet. But, uh, even the micro study does not allow to discriminate the serpentine species. So, to investigate the morphology, some images reveal a more fibrous uh, uh, aspect and uh, the appearance of flexible uh, uh, fiber. Is this chrysotile? Finally, TEM, associated to diffraction pattern, revealed the double nature of this sample, which consists of the intimate intergrow of fibrous antigrite and chrysotile fibers at the micro scale. The second part of this presentation is uh, dedicated to the evaluation of the impact of supergen alteration in the processes of genesis and emission of fibers into the environment. The impact of supergen alteration was evaluated on the antigrate and tremolite altered sample by means of six-ray powder diffraction and by scanning electron microscopy to study the, uh, any modification, any possible modification on crystalline structure and on morphology. Uh, several study, no, a study of the measure and trace element concentration was carried out in order to investigate the influence of weathering on chemical composition. So, several two simulating chemical extraction by batch leaching experiments were performed, and a comparison of the capacity of fiber emission after leaching have been performed. Uh, as uh, clearly evident uh, in the slide, uh, increasing the degree of alteration from one to four for the antigrate samples, diffraction pattern um, show. Uh, completely compar comparable. No modification are observed in the peak position, in the peak broadening, or in the intensity. This is true for antigorite and for tremolite samples, and this suggests that uh, weathering does not impact the modification in the crystalline structure. Probably this impact, uh, um, weathering impact uh, their chemical reaction at the surface. Evaluating the weathering on morphological aspects for antigorite and mixed phase antigorite and chrysotile, we observed that uh, increasing the degree of alteration from one to four, for antigorite especially, um, a gradual increase in porosity was observed. Uh, the space between the fibrolamelle uh, increase uh, with, uh, correlated with the increase of state of alteration. In the case of uh, antigrate and chrysotile uh, uh, samples, uh, this uh, factor was uh, um, more important uh, because uh, probably um, the penetration and circulation of fluids and water between the fibrils and uh, lamelle is uh, facilitated in the fibrils of chrysotile that's opening the structure and generate a, a formation and release of fibers into the environment. To test the weathering on chemical composition, uh, analysis of major and minor elements of natural samples uh, were carried out for, and uh, 
Here I report the, the data acquired for antigrate and antigrate chrysotile samples for magnesium and iron content. Compared to the data of literature that are circling in blue, in blue, Caledonian samples show systematically a lower magnesium content and an higher ferro uh, iron concentration. And this suggests an advanced stage of the supergen alteration also for antigrade samples that macroscopically were identified as not altered. All our samples probably are already altered, are altered. And in addition, for antigrade samples, we can observe an increase of iron content with, correlated with the increase of the state of alteration. So, two beach, batch um, leaching experiments uh, in, uh, with uh, EMES and DTPA buffering solution extraction was carry out, were carried out uh, on uh, uh, not altered, uh, classified as not altered, antigrate and chrysotile samples in order to reproduce and uh, to uh, extract uh, major elements. I report here the case of magnesium content and magnesium concentration increased with time. Experiments were um, um, realized from two hours to 60 days. And uh, we find a magnesium concentration higher in the surnatal solution. This results in an according with results observed on antigrade natural samples. Uh, an increase of the release of magnesium content can be seen with the increase in the degree of alteration. And um, yeah. um, it's uh, not, not surprising, but uh, extraction realized with DTPR is more important and stronger than extraction released with MES. And uh, this uh, generates a more amount uh, content of suspended particulate in the surnatal solution. And uh, the emission, so the emission of fibers is therefore undoubtedly related to the chemical alteration of this sample. Chemical alteration induced uh, more and participates at the processes of generate and release of fiber, fibers into the environment. The last part of the presentation is dedicated to the in situ identification, the identification in mining context of mineral fibers with the portable Raman equipment. The aim was to develop an efficient and user-friendly analytical strategy that was able to discriminate with certain and without delay the potential asbestos fibers from the north armor fragments. The main contrast that we observed in the at the mine in front uh, were, are related to climate. Uh, the temperature is very strong in New Caledonia and the temperature is so, uh, and the humidity is also strong. It's so difficult to use the DPI for all the time during the exposition. Several tests were performed uh, in laboratory to test the reliability of this technique and uh, on 37 analyzed samples, 41 were identified without ambiguity. All these uh, uh, testing were, re were realized or was performed on the New Caledonian samples at a different degree of alteration. Uh, further analysis were uh, realized on the most uh, altered samples in order to verify, to evaluate the goodness of data uh, compared to the alteration. Uh, as clearly evident in the picture, despite the complete loss of cohesion of the sample, the goodness of data was not affected. A Raman, portable Raman allowed to identify, identify in this case, an antigrade phase. Uh, its work of uh, comparing of performances of Raman portable compared to the laboratory device was uh, realized in order to test uh, the efficacy of this technique. And um, despite uh, several intrinsic limitations related to the compact geometry of the equipment, uh, we can conclude that uh, observing the Raman spectra can portable the, the, the key, the, Portable equipment uh, allow to identify all uh, serpentine and amphibole phases. Uh, and uh, um, so sorry, um, we 
Okay, no. And um, it's the old PC. Um, okay, and um, we can uh, use a portable Raman because uh, it, um, it's uh, it's it's the answer the the analytical answer is uh, comparable. So finally, portable Raman was tested at the open mine of Balangero firstly, uh, Turin, uh, and uh, on 37 sample tests, for, for sample tests, uh, it means uh, spot analysis, uh, 33 uh, allow to identify the typical mineralogical association. So, the portable Raman was tested also in New Caledonia at the open mine of Tontuta, and in this case, there's on 30 sample tests, 20 give a positive response, allowing to identify the mineralogical association. Overall, on overall analysis realized that they 80% uh, were successfully, successfully identified with the end adder Raman device. To conclude, a multidisciplinary routinely approach is confirmed the only strategy possible to study and characterize fibrous serpentine and amphibole minerals. The supergen alteration does not modify the crystallinity of antigrate and tremolite, but affects the surface reaction and increases the genesis and realize of fibers. It's important to remember that chrysotile can crystallize in the form of macroscopic well-formed lamelle, and the fibrous antigrate of New Caledonia displays a great variability of texture and morphology compared to the literature. Finally, the portable Raman equipment associated to the dispersion staining observation mode should be the decisive diagnostic tool in the detection and characterization of asbestos in the mining context. For the perspective, uh, at present, a complete mineralogical structural characterization of the serpentine and amphibole on New Caledonia is now required. And thermal analysis would have greatly improved the characterization and discrimination of altered mineral fibers of New Caledonia. Concerning this, um, the supergen alteration, further batch leaching experiments should be performed on a MOX exhaustive sampling, including, for example, tremolite and chrysotile. And uh, moreover, the influence of the variation of physical chemical parameters needs to be investigated. In order to better simulate the processes of weathering at the outcrops, several cycles of hydration and dehydration should be reproduced under controlled conditions. And the variability of fiber morphology and size distribution on natural samples and uh, on samples obtained after leaching experiments on, um, should be better investigated. Concerning the health risk in the near future, it's important to realize a detailed study of the real dispersion capacity of asbestos and fibrous minerals in the air. And actually, there is not a true understanding of the formation and emission process of these fibers, and it is important to answer to worker and population requirements. The immunological investigation of environmental asbestos samples coming from outcrops and or storage sites must be integrated by the complete characterization, uh, identification and quantification of the filters collected by workers during exploitation activities. And I wish to say thank you to advisor, supervisor, prof, uh, uh, technician, student, PhD student, uh, uh, my family and uh, friends, uh, and all people that participate with me during the last three years. And uh, thank you to New Caledonia for this great experience. And thank you all for your kind attention.